Blog Talk Radio. You are listening to Add On The Limb Radio with Dr. Nicola Bird and co-host AJ Matter. Here are one star for leading a happy, healthy, and successful life. Welcome. I am Dr. Nicola Bird. I'm a psychotherapist and the founder of Self Imaging Therapy. I am joined by my witty co-host, AJ Matter. Thank you for being here with us today at Out in the Limb. We're here to celebrate life and illuminate the mind, heart, body, and soul. We're dedicated to inspiring and empowering you, providing you with the tips and tools needed to live the happy, healthy, and successful life you deserve. We have a very exciting show today. What do you think about it, AJ? Yeah, it sounds good. I'm looking at the guests here that we have today, and they got some cool stuff, so this show is going to rock, so I'm very excited about that. Short but sweet, but it's going to make it happen for people. Absolutely. So how have you been, AJ? Good, good, really. It's been a good day. It's, you know, it's great here in Florida. It's about, uh, yeah, I tell you, it's about 80 degrees today, so um, I probably shouldn't tell you that where you're in Canada right now, right? <laughs> yes, but I always say sunshine is in the heart, so I'm okay. I just bring the, I bring the happiness in, in my heart and the warmth in my heart, and it's it's amazing how much warmer it keeps me. Nice, nice, nice. You got a great outlook to that, and, I, and again, you know, I'm glad that we're doing the show here because there's so many people that you know um, are going to get benefited by the guests that you're bringing on and really sharing that value of what they're offering. So I, I'm really excited about this, Nicola. I'm really excited about it, too, so why don't we just um, bring Garnet in? So um, Garnet is an amazing author of two illuminating books, Dancing Forever with Spirit and Dancing on a Stamp. He's a retired lawyer who is here to share with us insights into the meaning of existence that he learned from his own personal spiritual awakenings. And I'm sure we've all had those questions. Have you ever pondered questions of your existence? Have you ever asked, who am I? What's my life's purpose? What happens after I die? That's what Garnet is here to help us um, illuminate and explore. Welcome, Garnet. Wonderful to have you. Thank you for having me, Nicola. So, Garnet, you grew up in a traditional Catholic background. You worked as a lawyer, a very conservative field. Yet you had a life-changing spiritual experience in 2007. Can you tell us about this and what you learned from that incredible experience? Right. Well, I was uh, still practicing law then in Calgary, um, and I was uh, taking a stroll down the street one afternoon when all of a sudden, out of the shadows, jumps this homeless man who stands right in front of me and stops me in my tracks. But instead of of going around him, like I would typically do with homeless people, I've met him on the street before, this guy stopped me because he had these amazing, sparkling, dazzling blue eyes. That, that were penetrating deep into my the very depths of my soul and at the same time sending this wave of pure, unconditional love that was infusing my body with, a, with an amazing sense of peace and security. So it was an amazing feeling. I knew this guy was different. Um, I'd never met him before, and I just stood there sort of transfixed. Anyway, that encounter eventually led um, uh, us to have a series of conversations, a dialogue. He explained to me that he was really one of my spirit guides in disguise, and that he had come to answer my questions, all the big questions in life that you just mentioned in your introduction, um, and, and to help me on my journey. And uh, so we had this conversation. And then at, at, at early on, he indicated to me that uh, he wanted me to write a book about our conversations and, and so I could describe his revelations uh, and make them available to everyone. And so um, I retired from practicing law about a year later, and then I uh, got around to eventually writing the book, uh, which was my first book, Dancing on a Stamp, uh, which was sort of his first set of revelations for me. Um, and uh, the, some of the amazing things he said, which are probably not new to you, is that you know uh, we're, we're all eternal souls that live forever. We came from the spirit side before we incarnated. We came here by our own choice. No one made us came come, and 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 we picked our our life circumstances before we were born. So we picked our place of birth, our parents, our name, our siblings, and so on. And and we designed a life so we could experience things and learn the lessons that we needed for our evolution as a soul. And when it's all said and done and we die, we go back to the spirit side where we can evaluate what we've just done uh, and plan our next life if we so choose. So uh, 
and the other thing he said was, which is uh, uh, different than a lot of uh, religions teach, is that God or the source does not manipulate events in our life, does not control what happens to us, doesn't make rules for us, and there's no judgment after we die. There's no hell, there's no punishment, we all go back to the same place. So he answered a lot of the big questions in a very uh, forthright and truthful manner, which really made a lot of sense to me, and I've described those and many others in my first book. Um, now, do you want me to talk about my second book, too? Well, I mean, I find it fascinating that you have, again, come from such a traditional background, and you had this incredible experience, and what that would how how that would have, like, uh, what was that like for you? So, you know, AJ, what do you think of this? Oh, I love this kind of stuff. I mean, these are these are like TV kind of made stories. I mean, I love it. And, um, you know, Garnet, if I can ask you this, coming from that uh, background, you know, that conservative background, when you did leave, how was how was this new world or this new life for you that you embraced? How was it how was it taken by your peers and your families? I mean, what did they how, did you get support there? I mean, what was that like for you? Well, it was mixed, AJ. Um, I, I got actually got good support from my family, my wife, and my sons. Uh, my wife is fairly spiritual, so she took to that very easily. And my sons, one of whom is fairly spiritual, and the other one is, I think, kind of neutral. But they they basically supported me, sort of like whatever you want to do, Dad, that's fine. Um, uh, some of my colleagues were very supportive. Some shunned me, which was, and, and I haven't spoken to them since. I, I, I was I was aware of that. Before I published my book, I had to struggle with the idea of should I come out of the spiritual closet because my life as a lawyer, as a corporate lawyer, was was very sort of stayed and straight laced, and I didn't talk about spirituality or religion or anything, and so this was quite different uh, out of character uh, for me to to write a book, uh, Dancing on a Stamp, and so I expected some backlash. I got some. So it was a bit of a mixed reaction. One of my best friends that I went to law school with, um, he, uh, after reading, I sent him the, an autographed copy of the book, and he didn't speak to me for six months. Um, so anyway, <sighs> for those things, you know, that, that, that just, that's the way things happen, and I knew I was gonna, there was going to be some fallout, uh, but I'm happy I did it. I don't have any regrets at all, uh, and it's been just a whole new world for me, uh, you know, leaving the corporate world of uh, corporate law to uh, being a, a writer of spiritual books. Uh, and I, I find it uh, uh, amazing. I really enjoy it, and uh, I, I'm happy to. I'm very happy I made the decision to publish my book. Well, I'm feeling you, man. I'm feeling you. <laughs> I love it. That's great. That's great. Can... <laughs> so, Garnet, how yeah, yeah. has it changed your life? Because this is such an amazing, transformative experience that you had to encounter backlash and rejection. And what's the, been the personal result for you? Well, it, 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 it's been very good for me because um, I, I now have uh, I have a lot less stress in my life. Um, I uh, I look at things differently as I go through life, knowing that that uh, you know if, if things don't happen the way I wish, uh, there's a lesson there to be learned, and I have to have the right attitude and outlook to to, to get by it. Um, I know that uh, uh, you know the the universe and God isn't doing things to me. I'm I'm, I'm creating my own reality by my pre-birth planning and, and how I react to events. Um, and uh, and I'm no uh, I'm not afraid of dying. I mean I I, I know where I'm going to go. I know where everyone else is going to go. I know that my loved ones who have predeceased me are um, very happy on the spirit side. So that takes away some of the concern that was sort of roiling through my mind as I was uh, going through my adult years. So it's a much more pleasant uh, atmosphere that I'm in, uh, and uh, I really enjoy being a writer and 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 uh, spreading Albert's revelations to everyone because I think it can provide comfort and inspiration to all the people out there who are still, uh, you know, casting about for a new paradigm to latch on to. I'd I, I like to explore that, that I circumstances of our lives and that we're born so that we experience things necessary for our evolution. Now, I work with people who have experienced abuse and violations, and they might have real difficulty with that concept because of, of the pain that they have suffered and the fact that they, because they might interpret that as being blamed or have a difficult time just comprehending that. What do you say to, to people in, in who have had such painful lives in terms of that particular message? Well, there's a lesson in everything, and, and it's difficult when you're in a lot of pain to, to, to to think that maybe I picked this life for myself because it's hard for us to understand here. We don't have the whole picture and we don't remember what we did in our pre-birth planning. But the fact of the matter is, is that you did pick this life 
and, and, and you had a valid reason for it before you were born. You don't understand that now, but when you die and cross over, you will get the whole picture back again. So it, it is difficult for those people. Uh, they just have to sort of realize that they're in pain, not because God is doing something to them or the universe is, 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 uh, is, is looking down on them. It's because they put themselves in that position for a very good reason, and it's all part of their growth and evolution. So um, there's no magic answer uh, to these people. They have to just have faith that, that, uh, that they put themselves there to learn a lesson and to experience things that they needed, uh, that they thought they needed before they were born. So you're trying to say that this is an empowerment thing. Is that what you see it as, uh, AJ? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, I, you know, I'm totally vibing, and I really, you know, get what a lot, what a lot of we saying about, um, you know, maybe I don't know if you want to refer to it as like a soul contract where we made these decisions and, you know, the fact that, um, you know, that people can find that peace. I think that um, a lot of people right now is the way we see it is a lot of their organized religious beliefs that they're just kind of flying in their face of reason right now. So I think, you know, when you hear from someone like Garnet who has that, you know, otherworldly view, let's call it, I think it's very healthy for us to really step up and learn about that right now because we're seeing the way things are it just don't work as a general society. So it, it just really opens up our ideas. I mean, I love the idea of the impartial and non-judgmental concept of God or the sources that you say it. Because, I mean, I see so many people, you know, struggling with a critical mind and you're creating a, a concept of, of God or the universe or spirituality or the source as... Um, you know, that alleviating fears and making us accountable for our own actions, which is what you promote in your two books. And um, how do you feel that your, Garnet, that your concept of personal soul responsibility makes us better people? Well, I think it, it, it takes away the sort of the feeling of, of some people that, that they're a victim, victim of God or the universe. And so if you realize you're responsible for your own reality and for your own life on earth, then you have to, even though you don't exactly remember why you put yourself into the situation, you know there was a reason, a valid reason, and that every time you, you run into a situation, you have to ask yourself, what is the lesson, what is the experience I, that I wanted to have here? Um, and and, and, it, and it, it, it sort of helps you have a, a different outlook on life. If you, if you think that you're a victim, you can feel sorry for yourself and go through life saying, well, things aren't going well for me because God is being mean to me for some reason, even though I didn't deserve it. But if you, if you get rid of that uh, uh, feeling, uh, then you can sort of assume responsibility for where you are and what you're doing, make the most out of it, uh, you know, learn from your mistakes and move on and, and have a good outlook on life and know that at the end of the day, no matter what you do, you can't go wrong or, or become lost. You'll always end up back on the spirit side. And, that, and no matter how many mistakes you made or how many times you screwed up, um, you still go back there where you can uh, look back on your life, evaluate what you did, and then move on from there. So it, it, it just gives you a more positive outlook on life. I love the idea of everything that we can do to really create more empowerment for us. That's, that's the real takeaway that I get from this. What do you think of that, AJ? You know, I love it. Darn it, one, one last question here for you I got for you is that when you um – you know, when you're connecting to your source, are you are you also connecting with this guy that you once met that actually, you know, helped you go to this change or really, you know, gave you these messages in some capacity? Sorry, do you mean am I still connecting with Albert, my spirit guide? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No, I I still do connect with him, and, and in fact, he's been sort of my my direct connection with uh, w with the source, with the spirit. Um, and and we had the, the, this dialogue uh, over a series of time after he confronted me on the street, and then. Subsequent to that, he actually took me on a series of out-of-body astral adventures to see different places in the universe and things on the spirit side so that I could write about it, and that's, that's what's in my second book, Dancing Forever with Spirit. So I still do have contact with Albert, and in fact, after my second book, he came back again, and we went on another series of adventures, and that led to my third book, Dance of Heavenly Bliss, which has just been accepted by my publisher for publishing. So he's still around, and he's promised to come back again. He says, I have to write... Uh, a, a few more books before my my mission is is over. Well, that really certainly sounds like you have amazing support. AJ, what were you saying? Oh, no, Albert, Albert, Albert. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, AJ. Do you do any type of now? Are you going to? Are you doing this now, or do you do any type of consultations with people? Do you, or you know, as far as helping them on a one-on-one -on -one or a group levels? I I don't. 
Um, I, I don't uh, I don't do readings for people, and I haven't been doing any consultations. I've been just busy uh, dealing with Albert and writing my books. That's my current mission. Um, I don't know what it will develop in the future, AJ. But but one of the things that Albert uh, uh, was clear about, he said, I'm not here to help you with your personal matters or other people. I'm here to give sort of a broad message to all humanity, which I want you to, to describe in your books. So that's uh, that's where I am right now. Uh, I, I'm hoping that people who read my books will get some comfort and inspiration and perhaps some guidance, and that's uh, that's sort of the, the the level I'm at right now, although that may change in the future. Okay. Thank you very much, Garnet. Garnet, so where can we find your books? Tell us a little more. I know in your, your most recent book, Dancing on a Stamp, which I really love, there's this message for us to discard our fear and all of the other negative emotions and embrace love and compassion for everyone and everything around us. I find that just very powerful. Um, can you give us one takeaway tip for the listeners, what they can do in their life to discard their fears? Because I know so many people have such a difficult time doing so. Well, one of the things is that, that we, all, we all get a lot of guidance from our spirit guides. Everyone has like two or three spirit guides throughout our life. And they're constantly sending us messages and trying to help us on our journey. And the thing is, the problem is that most of us don't always hear those messages because our minds are too cluttered with thoughts about the, what happened last week or what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, so the, 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 the way to help ourselves uh, get through the, this journey is to quiet our minds through meditation and try to hear the messages we get from our spirit guides and then follow their guidance because they, they know what's in your life plan and they know where you should be going to learn the lessons that you want to learn. And so if everyone can do that, uh, it will reduce their stress level, uh, make their outlook on life uh, much brighter, um, and they will have a, a, a much happier journey on this, uh, on this planet. So that's, that's one of the main things everyone should strive to do. Thank you so much, Garnet. You've been amazing. You've offered so many tips, and, it's, and we're, we're so grateful for having you here today. Just tell us quickly, leave us with where uh, your books can be found and where people can reach you. Um, well, there's buy links on my website, which is uh, uh, com or dancingonastap.com. Uh, there's buy, li- buy links to the online stores. Uh, you can buy it directly from my publisher, Ozark Mountain, which has a link on my website. Um, lots of bricks and mortar stores have my books. Um, and if they, if your favorite store doesn't, they can certainly order it for you. And my email address is on my website, and I'd love to hear comments and questions from your listeners. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. You've really enlightened us, and, and we are grateful for your time with us. Thank you so much, Garnet. Thank you for having me.